Oh. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy and Annie here from The Quartering. And there was a lot of news yesterday going on around some plagiarism accusations in the video game journalism industry. Now, if you remember the last time this came up, Annie was also very salty about it. But I believe it was IGN at the time, and it was a bit more difficult to detect this time around, it seems to be more blatant and ongoing for several years. Full disclosure, though, I do run a video game website. In fact, while I spin off earnings from this channel to run exclusivelygames.com. So know that going into this, that uh, I, I take no pleasure in um, bad things happening to other video game websites. I'm serious. That's not like my dry sarcasm. I don't think that we really compete. I think that people read the authors that they want and they want to read um, certain sites that they want. And I don't care where sites are or not aligned. In fact, Exclusively Games is a site that I purposely don't want any kind of alignments or political ideology happening in our articles. Apparently, people thought I wasn't going to cover this because niche gamers on one side and this other website, uh, Jamatsu is on like a reset era user. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. News is news, and I'm not going to be uh, biased just because I like somebody or not. In fact, I would hope that my history of covering things uh, would show that. Now, this isn't um, huge breaking news as if it were like an IGN. But it's interesting that really nobody's covering it except outside of Twitter, where everyone's making this an ideological battle rather than one about legitimate games journalism, uh, paying your employees as well as plagiarism. Now, CCN put out an article yesterday that is dripping with sarcasm, but does have some of the basic facts. Um, Niche Gamer has been accused of plagiarizing articles from Jumatsu over the past few years. Many instances of plagiarism were discovered, but Niche Gamer claimed they had been done by a quote-unquote ghostwriter. This excuse rings hollow due to the severity of theft which has occurred. Now, I've talked to some insiders and former employees of Niche Gamer, and we're going to add some color there, but I don't want to poison the well. Plagiarism is a pretty serious allegation in the world of games journalism. Actually, it's a pretty serious allegation where writing is concerned as a whole. Back in 2018, IGN had to remove a bunch of plagiarized content, and earlier this month, PlayStation Japan was accused of plagiarizing lots of different animations. Now, this is via CCN.com. Now, Jamatsu had pointed out, uh, you know, oh, wow, super weird. There's all, no Jamatsu sourcing in this article either. Where'd that information come from? Uh, they had some pretty bad examples, which I'm going to go through. Niche Gamer had clearly been stealing. It all started when Jamatsu tweeted at Niche Gamer asking directly about plagiarized content. Nidra, Niche Gamer was quick to respond saying they would take down the post and article, then it got worse and worse. Numerous instances of plagiarism have surfaced from as late as, as far back as 2016. These instances of plagiarism are pretty darn blatant too. One of the earliest is from an article about PC releases and a couple of JRPG games, which still contained a quote, read more at Jamatsu link at the bottom. Whoa! Not only plagiarism, but absolutely lazy. Other examples included some minor changes to throw off plagiarism checkers, but were still found to be pretty darn close to their sources. Now, from what I understand, when I was going into this as just, you know, unbiased, even Steven look at what's going on here. I thought, hey, you know what? I run exclusively games and my editor has maybe 10 or 20 different writers that she uses and maybe one would slip by. I don't necessarily think we have complex checking systems in place. Now we can't afford to. So I thought, okay, well, maybe, you know, this was just an article, you know, one of the writers was doing it and they didn't notice. I think that would be a good faith estimate of what happened, but it looks a little more suspicious. In fact, I reached out both to Niche Gamer, which I thought would respond to me. They didn't respond, as well as Jamatsu, which apparently doesn't like me. I thought they probably wouldn't respond, but neither of them did. Uh, Niche Gamer eventually did come out with a reason behind the theft, 
Basically, they said that it was that they had hired a ghost writer, a ghost writer. Uh, I don't know about up. Uh, I don't know about I don't know about all that, and I'm going to show you why I think that's a little suspicious. Um, they said it was uh, hired a ghostwriter who had been let go, has been since let go. Of course, if that is completely true, then this ghostwriter has been with the site since 2016, getting no credit for their work. If that's the case, then Nish Camera is a butt who, no matter what, is a <laughs> this is a massive and obvious lie or not. It seems unlikely that Nish Gamer has any way out of this one. They've clearly been stealing from Jamatsu for years. Even if it was a ghostwriter, then it speaks to a massive lack of editorial oversight that it was allowed this to happen as often for and for as long as it did. Personally, I think the Nish Gamer deserves every ounce of its backlash they're getting because they've lost over a thousand followers since the news broke, and hopefully they'll lose more. The only okay, all right. So this is obviously very colored. I don't want to. I don't want to really take a side here because I don't have any alliances to either person. But then you see like Imran Khan, who's the former editor at Game Informer, saying certain sites being in the news for plagiarism is one extremely funny, and two a reminder that most of these boner culture writers are talentless hacks. And three, a reminder that at the very end of 2019, that the gaming community never proper, properly reckoned with the worst problems this decade. It's so funny that you would think a former senior editor at Game Informer would be concerned about the editorial process and not ideological side picking, but that's the world we live in. This is modern day games journalism. And this isn't to cast any aspersions on Jamatsu or Niche Gamer because they aren't really responding in this way. But Niche Gamer put out a long tweet thread yesterday. In light of Niche Gamer's response, it's story time. Back in December 2015, I caught wind of Niche Gamer very blatantly stealing content from Jamatsu. I emailed the owner privately to inform him of this. I kindly said, and I quote, I'm not trying to shame you. I don't care about internet drama or anything like that. All I'm asking is to go back and source maybe your last two weeks of content that came from Jamatsu. Seems like a reasonable response. A thread of denials. I also get press releases and you're looking at coincidences followed to which I continued to provide new evidence and intentionally left out earlier emails uh, that I had intentionally left out. Uh, Eventually, the proper sourcing was added, but then it happened again later that month, and I had to email him once more. That, too, was eventually corrected. Also note that if you've seen images of Discord, where one of the writers said Jamatsu also has got mad, we used the same thumbnail for articles, even when said thumbnail in the YouTube video's thumbnail. Wait, even when said thumbnail is the YouTube video's thumbnail. To add context, uh, that's not entirely true. This is part of the same story. One of those denials at the time was basically, you guys pick good thumbnails, so we use your images. But we write our own posts, which was hard to believe considering they were the same images at the source, just not my exact crop, which they used on tons of posts. Uh, oh, so yeah, I don't believe this ghostwriter scenario. I was super nice about it back then. I kept it under the radar. Even when it happened a second time with folks finding content dating back to 2016, it looks like it never stopped. Um, now, interestingly enough, Sophia Narwitz, uh, a friend of the channel and, 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 uh, someone I would follow on Twitter, definitely, um, has worked for Niche Gamer and has shared additional information. He's going to spin it as Ghostwriter, which Niche Gamer wrote, we've investigated accusations for the recent content on our site to another site, Jamatsu. We've recognized uh similarities with some of the content which has been generated by a ghost writer that acted as a contributor for our website for on some content this writer has since been terminated this is brandon here the eic i apologize for letting the slip by i've been exhausted running everything with the site and should have double checked their sources i need to delegate more and with our newer hires we're going to do just that well interestingly uh i mean the the article literally has your competitor's name in it and you let it go by. Um, as somebody who wrote a niche gamer, this is Sophia, whose partner was also an editor there, I know there was no such thing up until we both last over the summer. Maybe things have changed, I can't say for certain, but I heavily doubt this excuse. And then if you look at... Um, that will be... Notice Nish and him don't... I haven't tweeted since this all came out. Radio silence. 
Pope did a did on a Discord apparently saying the claims are unfounded, but that's their own uh, echo chamber. He's going to spin it as a ghost writer, uh, and which is what they did. She goes on to chain also add for context. Brandon was not, wasn't paying everyone while bragging that he did. In August, an agreement was made that he reneged on. Caitlin Rory never got paid. And now he's talking about how Niche almost got taken over by a tyranny or a tranny harem. Sorry. People who busted their butts for the site. Uh, the best work of my career was written for Niche, but my career has been built on calling questionable ethics out and I'd be a hypocrite if I ignored how Niche hasn't paid all their employees. Employees he now refers to as a tranny harem. This is Niche Gamer and she has the receipts. Again, I don't want to pick sides here uh, because that is what they do, the games journalists. Um, and it's sad to see the fact that the only coverage this is getting from other games journalists is picking ideological sides, which tells you exactly where their minds are at. She goes on also to say, I've been trying to raise the alarm for Nish for a while from unpaid staff members, even when he prayed about paying everyone, to his treatment of them after they left uh, to, uh, to more. I cannot speak for reasons. I will be clear later next year. The fact is Brandon is a lying POS. And here's another author chiming in. I wrote for Niche Gamer from 2014 to 2015. It gave me a place to sprout and grow and write about video games. I stand by everything I wrote for the site, but this news is incredibly disappointing. Brandon, that's their EICO, kept promising to pay me. He never did. So from not paying your writers to um, having a said ghost writer, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this doesn't seem great it doesn't seem like uh the eic of niche gamer has their staff's best interest in mind i don't care one iota about how uh where people's ideologies land i think any website that picks sides like that is a stupid waste of time for both people who are reading it and people who are writing for it but you can see some great examples here um from zario it says you have niche gamer riot announces Riot Forge publishing label will publish new games set in League of Legends. Jamatsu replies, made one edit here, PC console and mobile, PC console and mobile. Also, every instance of quote League or League of Legends is italicized in spec element, which is not something that seems to be done in articles that didn't come from me. They're just going through and pointing out Sword Art Online. Uh, this is another article. Sword Art Online. Here's Jamatsu. Ah, seems you accidentally removed the exclamation point that follows the game title in the description, just like I did. What a coincidence. Here's another one. Uh, Yeast Memories of Calcutta. Salsetta. Sorry, I'm going to mispronounce it. To no one's surprise at this point, the press release I edited for my article for this story is copy-pasted in the Niche Gamer article as well. Um, online Combat. Game uh, Naraka. Blade Point. Wow. The exact same edits. Recognize, uh, reorganizing I made to my description of the game is replicated here as well. Even the extra dash before Crimson Knight I accidentally added when first publishing. There is a litany of examples. This is bad. Um, this is very bad for a website. And I don't think that blaming it on spooky ghosts is exactly the best way to approach this. I'm not sure. This is unfortunate to see in the space. I hope that um, that if he's telling the truth about a ghostwriter, that he can prove it better than this. And that he puts something in place because this is not okay. Uh, it's tough to make it, believe me. Hundreds of people have emailed me to ask to write for exclusively games, and I wish I could pay them all, but um, I know it's something that a lot of people are into, even though written word isn't as popular as it once was in the video game space. Um, and for any defected writers from this website, if you're not the ghost writer, you know, maybe we can make some room for you. <laughs> Breaking news! Uh, I hope that um, the editor will work this in at a logical point, but a uh, huge update to the Niche Gamer story. It would appear that the EAC looks like they're going to be stepping down. According to Sophia Narwitz, I uh, said, a little birdie has shared this image with me. It seems Brandon will be stepping down from his position of power at Niche in the near future. Quote, 
Brandon will be stepping down as EIC as far as I know once we get our stuff together. He's going to be more a web dev role, and we're just kicking around who wants the hat now. Probably want to hire somebody who is, you know, is going to read your articles. But also, Tyler Val, a writer. Hello, everyone. As of today, uh, I'm taking an indefinite leave of absence from Niche Gamer and games journalism as a whole. There are multiple factors at play here, but needless to say, I do not have the spark anymore. I have no hard feelings towards Brandon or any one of his staff, but had this scandal uh, been the only issue, I would have stuck around. But it has recently come to my attention that there's simply an incompatibility between myself and the Niche Gamer audience. This incompatibility, incompatibility has grown to what can only describe as a vicious distaste or hatred for me, which this current situation has allowed to bubble up to the surface for me to fully see. Ethically, I'm in the clear. My soul is clean, but I am tired, stressed, and unhappy. I need time away from the industry as it will be the only way I may be able to heal. Thank you for your support in the last year. Wow. Frank, also another writer for Niche Gamer, seems to be leaving. Frank. I don't talk much about uh, on this account. People probably aren't even listening anyway, but by now everyone likely knows about this mess, the poo storm. I don't know what's going to happen or what I'm going to do. I just want to tell people about cool games and I don't know if I can anymore. Yikes. It would appear that Niche Gamer is crumbling uh, under this plagiarism scandal, which apparently goes far deeper than just plagiarism. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.